Hello there. The voice you are hearing is Milo Cawthorn, and you are listening to my interview with Elaine Goodman on gogoodman.com.au. Enjoy. Growing up in New Zealand, who was the actor or actors that you grew up watching or looking up to? Man, you know, I really... I um, consumed a lot of Jim Carrey videos, a lot of Jim Carrey movies, uh, Pit Detective 1 and 2, The Mask. He was probably the main um, inspiration. Uh, he was the main reason why I was excited about acting and why I thought it would, could be an idea. Who else did I watch? I just remember vividly... Jim Carrey made a massive impression on me, and um, so I'd probably have to go with him. Right, that's that's a good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> so, so were you like into that comedy genre, or was it was it just yeah. him and his weird, wacky way of acting? I think I was just into that comedy genre. I, th- I remember watching. I can't remember what I saw first. It might have been The Mask. I think I went to the cinemas to see The Mask, and it was just like, whoa, this is insane. And I've since rewatched like Peter Tickets. Um, to Ace Ventura and like the amount of energy and like the amount of like it's like it's like incredible overacting but in every scene he like he's like pushing it so hard it's like it's like um, tiring to watch but it's like incredible man those performances are insane but that, that was similar to Robin Williams he was almost tiring to watch yeah yeah exactly yeah they, they really expended everything they had they gave it all they had you began acting in theatre, was, was acting always going to be your career path? Um, yeah, I guess. I started, yeah, I started pretty young when I was like 11, and then I just, it just seemed to fit, it just seemed, it was something I, it like, it seemed that I was um, okay at it, uh, right from the start, like I didn't suck. Like, right from the start, like, my teacher was like, oh, yeah, you, you kind of got the hang of this in terms of, like, drama games and stuff. Obviously, I probably was a very bad actor at the age of 11, but, um, yeah, I think I think it just kind of it just kind of came naturally because I was always a bit of a show-off. And then, like, during school, I got a couple of, like, kids' TV shows when I was, like, 14, 15, and that set up <laughs> a dangerous pattern in my head because... You get a job, like, you get a TV job when you're at school, and so you leave school for, like, two months. You're getting paid for, what, for a 14-year-old, what seems like mentally crazy money, but it's probably not. And, like, you're hanging around on sets, like, food on sets, and so it sets up this thing of, like, acting is amazing. And then you go back to school, and you're like, I don't need this. I got acting. (laughs) And then school finishes, and then the acting, like, does happen, and you're like, oh, shit. (laughs) But, yeah, acting was, you know, like, Acting was the only thing that really um, it drew me in, and I was like, "Yeah, I can. I, I would like to do more of that." There's nothing else at school really that I was that into. And you started off doing a lot of, of theatre, and that's where a lot of people start. Mm. Was that a good training ground for you, memorizing lines and acting live? I, I, it's hard to know. I, I think so. I think um, it's. Uh, it's definitely a different set of skills, and like when I first from theatre, when I first went on to um, any kind of screen work, I was always like <laughs> similar to Jim Carrey or to Rob Williams. I was pushing it hard. Like there was no subtlety in my performance. If they wanted me to be sad, I was like rubbing my hands into my eyes, faking tears, and I was like. So I think um, it's a, it's a different set of skills as theatre, but it teaches you. It teaches you. I think a lot of it's just about being in front of a crowd and being comfortable or trying to be comfortable in front of a lot of people, you know? I think that's, I think that's pretty important, yeah. And what, what about that transition to acting on screen where you're not acting in front of people, only the people that are telling you what to do? Yeah. And the that people that a... are trying to make you look good. <laughs> the first screen gig I did was a thing called Secret Agent when I was playing this nerd. Uh, who was like a super genie? He, he was like he was like Q. It was like kid. It was like kid 007, and there were a few kids, and then I was like Q. I was like the nerdy guy. Um, and that was kind of good because I guess transitioning into kids TV is the stuff is pretty over the top as well. You know, they're not expecting you to give like Oscar worthy performances if, you, if the show's on at 3 p.m. on a weekday, and so <laughs> that kind of that kind of suited me because I could be kind of over the top and a bit silly and. Um, yeah, that was 
that was really fun. It was like super low budget. Like our green room was a van. Like that's where we would go. We just sit in the van. And uh, but that was super fun because it was people like all around my age. It was like five or six of us. And um, yeah, that was that was that was really great. Too great. Yeah, and you've started going on to what I've got questions about. You started out on kids' TV shows. Is that a challenge acting-wise? Um, these are great questions, by the way. Um, Power I know. Rangers. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Power Rangers was the biggest challenge, just simply because of the length. Um, because most other TV shows are only for three months, and Power Rangers was six months. And by the end of that six months, you're like, wow, we've been like. We've been like screaming out like Power Rangers RPM for like a like half a year, and you start to be like, "Geez, is this, is this my life now?" Like it's, <laughs> it, it starts to get a little bit mind boggling how there's that energy and, and so yeah that that was that, that was the hardest just because the length of time. But no, other than that, it was they're mostly quite fun. And you mentioned Power Rangers RPM, which was uh, you did a couple of kids shows and then you did Power Rangers. Were you a fan of the original series growing up? Yeah, I. I don't know how. I must have seen it because it got banned in New Zealand very quite early on. Really? Yeah, because there was a group of um, concerned mothers because kids were going into schools and being like, "Hey, let's play Power Rangers," and the other kid was like, "Oh, I'm not so sure." He's like, "I'm the Red Power Ranger," and then just smacking him in the face. <laughs> and uh, he's like, "You're a putty. I'm a Power Ranger. Let's do this," and just beating up, wel- welting people. And so. There was a big thing about um, violence in kids' TV, and it got and it got banned along with other shows. But Power Rangers was like the, at the forefront; it was the main culprit. So I saw like maybe a couple of years of it when I was younger, and I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. I remember I went to see the movie that came over here that was shot in Sydney. I went to see that in the cinemas, and I was like, "This is amazing!" And they were like rollerblading and doing backflips, and I was like, "This is incredible!" And then it kind of went off air, and so I think I kind of forgot about it. And so when it came, when the audition came up, I was like, well, "Is that still going?" And, uh, <laughs> I didn't really realize that it had this whole history where it just kept on going because it wasn't I wasn't in my sphere of um, uh, cognizance. And what was the question? Were you a fan of the original series? <laughs> yes, yes, I was. <laughs> was. Was your mum one of the mums that tried to get it banned? Um, I don't remember her having a problem with it. <laughs> But uh, no, she wasn't. She wasn't on. The, she wasn't on the board of people getting it banned. But I'm sure she probably didn't approve. God, there was a board. Oh my God, it's like political correctness. That's where it originated. That's where it originated. We started it, New Zealanders. And now it's com- completely over overridden Australia. <laughs> <laughs> so how was the Power Rangers experience? I mean, RPM was a later season, so mm. it would have been a completely different crowd to what I grew up with. Were you yeah. recognised? Did you did you get a toy of yourself? I did get a toy. Yeah. I got some amazing fan letters. Some creepy fan letters. Yeah. Um, have you kept any of them? I think I still have them somewhere. Yeah, I think I, I, I feel really bad because I, I was like always meant to reply to them. And then I didn't. I, <laughs> really, I feel really bad. I really should have because some of them were really lovely. Um, you know how to make this interview go viral. You should read a creepy fan letter. Oh, fuck. I think, I think they're not here. I think they're at another place across town. Oh. But that would be amazing. Well, that would be amazing. <laughs> it's not. New Zealand's not that big, is it? <laughs> Yeah, I'll be five minutes. I'll go. I'll go to South Island. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How it was. It was really fun, man. It was also quite. It was like something had happened where Disney. Disney didn't realize they had to make another season, but then the toy manufacturer called them up and was like, uh, "This contract doesn't expire for another year, so you have to make another season." And Disney were like, "What?" And the toy manufacturer was like, "Yeah." And so Disney were like, oh, fuck, "All right, we'll just just make another just make another season." And so we were kind of like. We were kind of, I feel like maybe perhaps a little bit forgotten about in terms of Disney's um, opinion of us. And so there wasn't a lot of effort put into um, advertising us and like and like pushing the, the Power Rangers thing because they, they were kind of washing out, washing their hands of Power Rangers and the next year they sold it on. Um, so that was, that was kind of had positive and negative effects because Eddie Gazzelli was kind of allowed in, the, in that first um, three months, he was kind of allowed free reign to do what he wanted. And um, which meant it, was, meant it was like a little bit different from other Power Rangers seasons. It was a little bit uh, aged up the material, and so we really enjoyed that. And we really, um, and we, it was it was a great group of people: Rose McIver and Ika Darvel and Dan Ewing and Olivia Tennant. It was like a really, really awesome group. And Aaron Boyle, and the company. 
and it was like a, a sick group of people, and we got on really well. So yeah, it was it was looking back on it, it was like an amazing, it was an amazing time, it was an amazing experience, and I I loved it. Was it different to what it looked like during the Saban era? Um, yeah, it it felt a little bit, as I say, a little bit aged up from the Saban era. Um, there's a little bit more, uh, the storyline was a little bit more coherent over the episodes, I guess. Um, and it, I guess, I, <laughs> it felt less cheesy, but I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was less cheesy, but. <laughs> was, that, that, was that the season that was filmed in New Zealand? Yeah, yeah. after was filmed in New Zealand, yeah. Right, so it was close to home. So you didn't yeah. really need to leave home yet. <laughs> Roll out of bed, and then you're on set. Were you still living with your parents when you were filming that? I was not. I was flatting, and it was, it was like, it, it was like before before that I'd been delivering pizzas and getting paid like, you know, thirteen dollars an hour or something. And, and then you went to Power Rangers and you got paid seven dollars an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. What an <laughs> eye opener. <laughs> um, it was it was like yeah it was incredible man like it was like the change in income was was drastic and I uh, I took I took advantage of that change in income in a very very real way. <laughs> yeah, Seven dollars an hour, but you were working a lot more hours. <laughs> in two thousand and eleven, you moved to LA to shoot a movie. Now, I might have got a bit confused here. Mm. I think it's my question says the movie was called Blood Punch, but that's the movie you're releasing now. Is that correct? That is correct. You were filming that in 2011? Ten points. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, that's correct. So how I'll... hard was the move to, first of all, to the other side of the world, and then second of all, into horror, when you'd been doing kids' shows? <laughs> <laughs> so start with mo- the move to the other side of the world. The move to the other side of the world was made a lot easier by Eddie Gazelian and, and Madeline Paxson, who were the writer and director of Blood Punch and the producer and writer of that season of Power Rangers. Um, so we we got along with them really well, and I didn't realize how uh, how much they liked or respected us until Eddie, got, Eddie wrote me an email saying like, "Hey, we've written you guys into this film. If you want to come over and film it, let's do that." And so me and Liv were like, "Oh shit, okay, let's do that." And so yeah, it was it was surprisingly easy because they were there. We we lived with them for like the first few months. So we our own, and like LA, the hardest thing about LA was the visas. Like we could only have a visa that allowed us to act and so we couldn't we couldn't do other jobs which was that was hard but apart from that it was really it was cool it was an amazing experience to go and live in LA it's um it's it, it, the hardest thing I guess was like in New Zealand there's a lot of you can't escape the, the nature there's a bush where if you drive somewhere there's like there's a forest there's a mountain there's the ocean <laughs> and in LA you're, you're close to the you're close to the coastline but it doesn't feel like it you know, you feel like you're in this, like, desert with, with, like, stucco walls and, like... I think that was one of the hardest things, is, is like, eradicating that nature from your life. Um, and what was the other question? Blood Punch? Um, the move from kids' TV into the horror genre. That was, um... That didn't, that, that didn't seem that hard, I don't think. That was uh, a lot of, um... Does it, does it involve a lot more acting? Or can the horror yeah, genre yeah. be as cheesy as kids action TV? <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, especially for Blood Punch, like it didn't. It's not a film that takes itself too seriously, and um, neither does kids TV really. Especially neither neither Rangers. And so now nah, the the move it was just it was just another another gig. Well, we definitely did a lot more rehearsal and, and like and like um, tr- talked about the characters a lot more and treated that side of it with more respect, but. No, it was um, Blood Punch was was fun. It was also quite fast, and there was a lot of pressure, but it was there was a lot of really fun stuff. And how how often are you moving between New Zealand and LA? <laughs> Not that often now. We I'm I'm thinking about going back for a short while cause just to visit Eddie and Maddie and and um, check it check that out. But now I for the past I came back in 2013, and since then there's been a fair amount of work in New Zealand. And um, and I didn't have I didn't have the urge to go back to LA. Nothing was calling me back there. So yeah, for the moment it's it's New Zealand and perhaps Australia and maybe a couple of little visits to LA. 
was it always your intention to... I mean, you said horror just popped itself up. Are you happy in horror? Do you want to try other genres as a young actor? Or uh, is, is horror something you're, you're comfortable with? <laughs> I'm comfortable with being employed. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, really. I, I'm really into... Um, I'm really into uh, comedy, and I, I enjoy I enjoy working on comedy stuff. I feel like that's that's very enjoyable. But I guess if you do anything for long enough, it gets boring. Um, I haven't done horror very much at all, so I'm still I'm still very interested in it, and I still think it's um there is something about horror films and like and like kind of genre movies that that is quite freeing because you, there's nothing expected. It's it's not like a biopic. It's not like a serious biopic. There's there's very little pressure on you to be like to be amazing, you know. And so that's quite fun, and it feels a bit more like, I don't know, yeah, I guess freeing is the word, there's less pressure. But yeah, no, if there was anything else that <clears throat> I really wanted to do, it'd be, it'd be comedy, it'd be like a comedy film. Have you ever tried stand-up? Stand-up terrifies me, yeah, it terrifies <laughs> me. I feel like it's a completely different, completely different um, style and set of skills that you need. I've, I've been to see some, st- I went to see some stand-up the other, like a couple of weeks ago, and it was three hours of like raw like fresh stand-up comedians and it was like oh, like people bombed so often and it was just like oh god it was so hard to watch so no stand-up is like deeply scary to me and now you're releasing blood punch five years on and it's screening in new zealand can you tell me a little bit about the movie blood punch is like i watched the ad and it it's, looks kind of creepy <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit creepy it's like um, Groundhog Day meets Blood Simple. It's like a noir black comedy thriller slash horror. Um, it's a uh, it's a love triangle on meth. <laughs> Use any of these you want. Um, well, th- now this interview has coarse language and drug references. <laughs> so we're good. We're going down the right track. Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a hard movie to describe because it's kind of it's it's noirish. It has like noir noir themes, and we watched noirish. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it, it, it walks the line between noir and real life. We watched for for some of the inspiration that uh, Eddie was was into, and, and what we watched as a group was um, Double Indemnity. So like a classic, like one of the classic noir films, and he he kind of used like bits of uh, like inspiration from that film to write Blood Punch and there are some things in there like the voiceover but then it kind of swerves into like like a black horror comedy and like a psychological thriller towards the end um, the thing I like about it is it doesn't it doesn't um, spoon feed the audience um, and it keeps I feel like it keeps them guessing and it yeah those are the things I like about it and where can people watch it or get access to it <laughs> okay it's screening in Melbourne on June the 25th at the back lot of the studio. Um, uh, I don't know the exact location, but you can find it on Facebook. Uh, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be out on um, on demand te- uh, television, but I don't know any of that. I don't know any of the details of that. I probably should, but I don't. Uh, but it looks like <clears throat> in the next, at the end of June, uh, if you search for it, it'll be more available in Australasia. And before we get into the fan questions, where can people find you? Where can As pe- in online. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that question mixes people up so much. Where? Uh, is, what, what is your current location? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We want latitude and longitude. <laughs> yeah. Um, where can people find me? Um, they can't, I don't think. Well, everything's private. My Facebook's private. My Instagram's private. Um, Do you have a page? I don't have a page. Do I have a page? No, I don't think so. Um, uh, they, well, they could send me an email. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a fax machine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or like if they have pigeons. <laughs> yeah, if people just hold on to pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> could they send me an email? I wonder if I should, yeah. Oh, well, Okay. Send an email. I'll set this email up right now. <laughs> if people want to say hi and see what you're up to. <laughs> yeah. 
there will be a live webcam feed. Um, so send an email to Milo Cawthorn is nice but too thin at gmail.com. Okay. Did okay. you really just set that up? I'm going to set that up. Yeah, I'm setting that up right now. Okay. So why, why don't you get into social media? As in, uh, as a page, so people can find you. I don't know. Um, never really crossed my I tend not to spend too much time on social media, um, because, I don't know. It doesn't, you work. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know. I like, I like to, I like to, I like to be, feel free of my, of my gadgets. So I guess that's why. But perhaps I should, perhaps I should do more of it. It might be. It might be. It might be fulfilling. I don't know. Have you ever done a convention? Never done a convention. My Ari from our season did a convention, and he loved it. And he said, "You guys have got to do it." And that made me quite keen. But um, never. And I'm quite interested in doing. It. Let's go into the fan questions. Yes, let's do it. Kyle Goldfinch from Sydney says, "Hi, Milo." You played probably one of the most quirkiest characters on power, uh, in the Power Ranger universe. If Ziggy came back to the Power Ranger universe, do you think his behaviour would change, and what colour would you be? Thanks, <laughs> Kyle. If Ziggy came back, would his behaviour change? No, I, I feel like Ziggy's pretty locked in. He's pretty locked into that personality. Um, I feel like he'd find it hard to change. If he came back, um, what colour would he be? And was there, was there another part to the no. question? Not just would he change and what colour would he be? I think Ziggy wants wants to go wants to go in the hot seat. He wants to be red. He wants to be leading the charge. Um, I don't know if that would work out very well because uh, Ziggy doesn't have the greatest organisational or like um, leadership skills. But I think that would be an interesting season of Power Rangers. Ziggy was the Red Ranger. Let's make that happen. Maddie Lemon from Darwin asks, "What was it like being a ranger?" It was amazing. It was amazing, Maddie. It was, um, uh, as I said, I saw them. The last time I'd seen a ranger was when I was like six or seven, and so I, I was still quite like enamored and like amazed. And like, so putting on the suit for the first time was incredible. The one weird thing, uh, Maddie, about putting on the suit, which a lot of people don't tell you, is you have to wear a G string underneath. Uh, no one told me this until they, until they, um, until they put the suit on, but it's very uncomfortable. And you have to wear it all day if you're in the suit. And uh, it's uh, it's a very odd feeling to be wearing a G-string and then spandex over the top. Yeah, guys aren't usually known for G-strings. <laughs> They're not. They are not known for that. They are not that, known for that. Is that for every season or just yours? Every season. Is that the Disney budget? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's every season because if you wear normal underpants, they can see the outline of them, and the, they can't they, they can't have that. Oh, but they'd like to see the outline of everything else. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the sexual references. Coming back with a vengeance. <laughs> okay, it's kind of a lose lose situation right there. <laughs> Guys get comfort or embarrassment on a kids TV show. You pick, yeah. Tom Russell from Brisbane asks, what was it like working with Bruce Campbell in Ash vs. Evil Dead? Tom Russell, what's up? Brizzy. Uh, Bruce Campbell, lovely guy, but he knows how to hold a room. He's got the, uh, what do you call it, magnetism. But if he's in a room and he's talking, you don't, you don't interrupt him. He's very, he's got a lot of power, Bruce Campbell. Um, I, had, I had a couple of small scenes with him. Uh, but he was lovely. He's very professional. He's on time. He's getting shit done. He does not muck around. Uh, but Ash vs. Evil Dead, that was awesome. That was a very fun show. And uh, I think it's turned into a good show in terms of watching. Billy Porter from Sydney wants to know, favourite thing about being a ranger? It's got to be the Billy, G-string. It's got to be. Yeah, but you can, Billy Porter, favourite thing about being a ranger, uh, that has got to be... Oh, it's like, it's the, there aren't many other shows, or like Power Rangers and stuff, where you get to like, especially our season, there was like cars to drive, and there were like little kind of fun, stunty things to do, pretty much every day. That was really cool. That was really cool to do like some physical, some physical stuff. 
didn't have to be all serious. You know? no. Did you do a lot of your own stunts? Okay, so we had a two-week training thing with Koichi, who's the stunt coordinator, and that's to like train you up to be to be better and also to work out how crap you are. And a couple of the rangers, like Ika and Ari, in my season, they had done like gymnastics. Like Ari had done gymnastics. He could do like that, that you know, where you backflip and land on your hands and then land on your feet. He yeah. do that. So I was like, ah, oh, okay. And so they, they like teach you some fights, and they're like, yeah, cool, cool. And then we get on set, and they're like, okay, guys, remember your training, all right? And they would get to my fight scene, and they'd be like, all right, here you go, mate. And they'd do like a rehearsal, and they'd be like, okay, we'll go for a take. And I'd do a take, and I was like, ah, oh, nailed that. And they're like, yeah, great, awesome, thanks, man. And I was like, really? And they're like, yeah, you can rest now. Go back to your, go back to your camp. You're fine. You're good. And I was like, okay, great. And as I was walking away, I'd see them like dressing up one of the Japanese stunty guys like me and they would do the scene again and again, and again <laughs> with him doing it perfectly because obviously I screwed up so no I I like I did a couple of my own stunts but not as much as other people who were actually coordinated and, and could use their bodies I was very uncoordinated Thomas Barrel from Sydney asks it's the final one will there be a deathgasm too Thomas Barrel if only if um if the heavens are lying then yes. I recently talked to Jason Lee Howden, and he, I think he's written a script for Deathgasm 2. Um, I would love to do a Deathgasm 2. Uh, so let's hope so, but not that I know of. Okay, uh, Milo Cawthorn here again. If for some strange reason you do want to send me an email that I will read, well then you can do that at this address, all lowercase. Milo Cawthorn is nice but too thin at gmail.com. I'll read and get back to you as soon as I can.